Uh, kilobits per second. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't need the echo. Yeah, KBPS just went to zero and then back to 6k. I don't know why I still had chat while it was disconnected. And my timer for my uptime hasn't changed. Weirdly enough. Well, I don't think that was because I hit button 4, though. Probably. It says 0? Oh, great. I'll have two VODs to deal with. Okay. Well, at least we're back. Um, I wonder what it was. I was able to see chat, so I don't think I got disconnected from the internet. Very weird. Uh, anyway, we got our plastic, we got our space plate, we've got... We need storage tanks. Regular old vanilla storage tanks. And I'll have to put those in the prereq. Uh, container. Come to think of it, I don't think the space train, uh, the construction train has them. We're only going to need a couple. I'll just grab them myself. Uh, but don't forget to whitelist. storage tanks. See an uptime of under five minutes. Unfortunate. Aussie internet doing Aussie internet things? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I actually get not too uncommon after midnight. I get disconnected for just a few minutes. Um, I figure they're just throwing in some kind of maintenance or something. But, uh, usually no problems during stream time, at least. Yeah, it was everyone. Uh, I mean, maybe Twitch, maybe... Maybe I did break something. It, it's weird that it would happen after... Um, like, half a minute after I did, though. Anyway, let's grab our... Uh, Apparently we don't have iron beams. Okay. Iron beam. I think I'm bringing those up already. Nope. We got to add this tag here as well. Steel gear wheel. I should bring up steel beams. And iron beams, probably. Let's have a look. Goes into a bunch of mole stuff. Refined concrete. You know what? I think iron beams are low throughput enough to not spend a whole train on them. A space uh, a space elevator train. And what about steel beams? Steel beams go into quite a few things. Uh, it is all kind of mole stuff. We're already bringing up rail. I think for the overall throughput for steel beams, um, we could maybe just make them on the spot and not worry about the production bonus. Some ISPs do midnight maintenance resets. Resign IPs to stop users from hosting, bruh. 
Okay, uh, so I think we'll make some... Oh, we already do have steel beams here. I'll just double check. I'm not bringing them in by rail, right? Yeah, no. Am I making them? I am. Iron beam. Beam. Alright. So that should kick in... Actually, I don't see a path for it to kick in at this rate. Uh, once we make enough space pipe, maybe there'll be a machine available. Uh, that would also mean we could make all of these. Except for the hypercoolers. So once we get 50 thermal radiators... Apparently we don't have the copper cable. Am I making copper cable here? Nope. We had a surprising amount of copper cable lying around. Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, we do have steel gear wheels in space, so let's not... Let's not skip the productivity bonus on that now. And copper cable, I'm just not going to worry about. On second thought... Stacks to 200. What does it go into that's only made in space? Labs. And some assembly machines, right? The stuff we're already making here, like thermal radiator. Space train battery pack charger. Yeah, I think this is correct not to bring up cable. Small Fs? What? You can break down your steel gear assembly machine. Yes. Yes, indeed. Alright. Are we still researching? We are. Fantastic. Uh, can we speed this up somehow? Not really. It's bottlenecked on the copper cable. I can give it some speed modules. And then the inserters can't keep up. Well, probably just the output inserter can't keep up. Seems good. Do I have any beams? I do. And that'll be our hypercoolers. They should find their way down here, unless I forgot to ask for them. Let's get 50 of these. And 15 of these. Beautiful. And we already have seven thermal radiators. So I could probably go ahead and build something that's at least functional already. Are we just about done loading this? Is the only thing we're looking for radiators? It is. Alright, let's go. Go build as much of this as we can. And I think that's as good a time as any to take a little break. Let's do some... Screensaver of the LTN variety. And we'll throw up some words on stream.
Time for words, indeed. Games are not a great problem. Things like spam, email service, spoofing. Fair enough. Okay. And Veldak is definitely here. Uh, do I need to get some... Do I need radar coverage over the entire map so we don't see map stuff like this with LTN screensaver? Also, why can't I zoom out more? It's kind of weird. Anyway, we'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Okay. Oh, this one's looking a bit close. Good luck. What do we have? We have... Our train... Misbehaving again. Is it my imagination, or is this happening ever since we used uh, the space cargo wagons? GG. Nicely done. Alright, let's get the words off the stream. And... Yeah, um, it seems like... I mean, obviously it could be something else, but... It seems like ever since we got the space cargo wagons, um, the train has to be on manual... for the logistics to work. Maybe if I turn on Enable Logistics while moving, maybe it thinks it's moving. Okay. So we have everything except for Cryonite Slush, Chemical Gel, and apparently Copper Plate, but I'm sure we have that. Um, what about slush? I haven't actually brought slush up yet. Let's do that. We're gonna have granite slush over here. Uh, 400k. We just have to tell this station that this cryonite slush is not actually available. This is going to be cryonite slush. And let me copy paste edit this station name. And then turn back on the train limit. Ride with space loco. Uh, it'd be pretty weird if the base locomotive caused that to stop being an issue. I guess it's possible. One, two, three, four. I mean, the problem is a bit weird in the first place. Still churning out blank data cards? Or at least... Nope, oh, we're waiting on copper. Here it comes. Oh, I forgot to turn on my RoboPort earlier. Alright, let's double check what we are missing here. It is only the thermal radiators. And I might as well wait until this research is done rather than setting it with the less efficient recipe. Um, obviously our one LTN train has a lot of catching up to do. But first I want to get Cryonite Slush worked out. I don't really think I need to park myself over here now that I think of it. Um, but we do want to update this station name. And I think I already did this one. Alright. As for the Cryonite Slush on the ground, uh, we're going to need a separate vanilla-only pickup for it, because it's a shared station. Let's park our construction train over here. And if this train is still working, we know there's some... Um, variable that's different between the two of them uh, that is the issue. Did I put vanilla train stops in the construction train? I should think so by now. Yeah, I did. Okay. So this goes here. And then over here. 
and oh, I oh, this is so luxurious. I forgot how long the space, uh, the underground pipes are normally. Let's get a substation over here. That feels so much nicer than the space underground pipes. Tell LTN. It's not LTN though. Uh, set the train limit if we've got Crynite Slush. I guess we didn't actually need the substation for things other than power here. If Crynite Slush is greater than 60k, output Crynite Slush input count, set train limit. There's only going to be one Crynite Slush train though. Except, oh yeah, because this isn't a shared station. Um, that was why we had to set the train limit higher than one. Alright, train limit is one, and station name is right on night. Wait, what? Slush provider. I might specify that it is specifically for vanilla trains. And that's it. Now we need a vanilla train with fluid wagons. Looks like this one is getting fueled. Slush. Pick up. Drop off, empty, and full. Cool, looks like we're good to go. That should be Crynite Slush into space. And I believe we've already got everything set up for the LTN train to deliver it after that. Eight minutes of life support. Uh, we've actually got like an hour and 23 um, after this, I believe. Where is our... Yeah, we've got 10 canisters. I don't know where they are. Here they are. Times 500% because of our life support efficiency. The bottom number, yeah. So this is just the current life support canister. Or that's remaining in the buffer after we've consumed a life support canister. Right then. Um, so that's the slush. And I believe that actually just leaves chemical gel. So what's our chemical gel build going to look like? Oh, hey, there goes the slush. Chemical... a gel. Well, we've already got this blueprint, so why don't I use this space repeatedly? Since it's got the space tiles. And I may as well fill all of this out. Uh, I hit undo and it didn't do anything. I don't think it works that way. It's not like a player action doing this. Call me Mr. Consistent. Budgie Bum, thank you very much for the four months. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Always appreciate when someone spends their prime on little old me. Um, 
Apparently we've got lab tiles behind these. There we go. Alright, so we want a default rail. Let's fix this first. A default rail block. Seems good. And then... Let's go ahead and get the power in here. And what was I going to do? I should put in some scaffolding first. And then we can just remove it afterwards. Why is it just... Oh, I need a brush. Okay. Alright. So, chemical gel. Normally I had this as... It's only one step. Cosmic water plus petroleum. And there's no side products or anything. Well, I think I'll just do a typical half a block build for this. So we've got... Two fluids in, one fluid out. That's what chemical gel is all about. Where are my signals? Don't need any more at this stage. And... Which is slower? in this recipe. Because I think I'd like to do the standard layout. Let me just double check. There's only one machine that can do it, right? Yep. Uh, I almost tricked myself there, thinking we could do it on the ground. But that's actually just unbarreling. So we go 10 versus 100 in. Pretty obvious. We're going to have the cosmic water on this side and the petroleum on this side. We're not going to be too worried if it takes slightly longer to unload the cosmic water. And then the challenge is just what's the best layout that we can do here. And the answer would appear to be we can fit eight of these. But, uh, we'll see. Depends on the pipes. I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem, actually. Okay, underground space pipe. Does indeed fit over here. Um, what kind of rate do we get if we go fast later on? Oh, this is a tier one. There we go. 3.1 megawatt. 600 kilowatt. This times eight. It's actually kind of slow. Only 3.3k petroleum gas in per second. Which means... If anything, we want the petroleum to have an easy path in. 336 cosmic water per second is practically nothing. So, let 
If I do these a bit further apart, I could do the cosmic water input here, 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 and here. But I don't think that's likely to help with the throughput. Unfortunately, these things are nine tiles. Oh wait, it's ten tiles with a one tile gap between them. So this actually fits perfectly. Except... Can we actually push... What was it? 1.5k? I'm sure we can. If we have a pump here. About 1.5k or so down this way. 4 tiles, that's unfortunate. I could move it over a tile. I'm sure I will do that, actually. And then this is off by 1. Um, move it all up a tile, I guess. Alright, so one, two, three. Oh, I could probably do better. No, that should be fine. Cosmic water, we should be able to just have like this. It's only like 150 per second on each side. Alternatively, it might look a little neater if we do it this way. I like where this is going, I think. Alright, so we're going to do petroleum. Chem uh, I almost said chemical gel. Cosmic water, and then we're going to need, what, eight tiles over here? Or I could do better. I think it would make the unloading a bit slower though. No, it should be the same. This is one, t this is one pipe, uh, same as if we do this. Okay, that goes there. What if I make this a fiver? And then that would be four tiles. Doesn't work out with uh, the odd numbered tiles either way. I think I kind of like seven better, probably. Is this going to line up the same way? I'm sure it isn't. We also probably... Uh, it's considerably less than 1k output, so I don't think we have to worry about the pipe shape on this side that much. But that said, this is pretty tidy. very tidy, one might argue. Now, the petroleum on this side has to be here, unless... maybe like this? And then this part could be more symmetrical, but we would have to have this one a bit offset compared to what we had before. Is it okay to have these here? I guess we're going to find out. Alright, cosmic water. 
goes in here, and then uh, we're gonna have to do a good, bit of a zigzag with this one. Fourteen tiles. Wait, what? Oh, I see. All right, let's find out if going at max rate, the fluids can keep up. Maybe like this. Eight tiles. So a fiver would be bad here. Let's do a three and a five. Ten tiles. There we go. Missing three modules, indeed. Alright, let's rate calc that. 672, 3.3k petroleum per second. Uh, and I'm just going to void pipe over here. Don't know if I actually had to pick a chemical there. But it looks like this has no trouble whatsoever. The machines at the very end are going full speed. That was a surprisingly easy build. And chemical gel is kind of low volume. Um, I'd be shocked if we need more than like 672 per second, even late game, or double that. Let's put in an output. And unfortunately that doesn't line up very well. But if it's only 672 per second, we don't have to worry that much. Let's just go with this. And with... that doesn't quite reach. Like this. Yeah, looks like it's having no trouble whatsoever. Cool. Although, if I don't put a pump here, I suppose theoretically it could slow down on this end when it's getting more full, but if it only slows down because it's getting more full, that's really not going to be a problem. Let's get rid of the modules for the sake of the blueprint. And we'll get rid of the extra scaffolding by placing empty space. Doesn't even have to make that terrible sound. And we'll tidy up a little bit. Some of this scaffolding, make it look a little less weird. Probably just... Scaffolding all the way up there. looks decent. This bit feels a bit weird to me, but I'm sure it's probably fine. We need to tell LTN what we've got, though. And once again, we're caught with no, no entity to string the wire across. 
I wish the wires would just reach a little further. Petroleum, wait, not petroleum, chemical gel provider, seems good. I don't suppose that can reach, nope. So I need something arbitrary to connect it with. Also, let's fill out a little bit more scaffolding up here. Yeah, that looks kind of strange. And we will be needing a LTN requester station. 60k quest threshold. And we're looking for cosmic water and chemical gel. I mean, the other thing that goes into chemical gel. Petroleum. Seems good. I think I only want to ask for long trains here. Cosmic water and petroleum going into biochemical facility and making chemical gel. And then we just need to tell LTN what we've got. I guess I could piggyback across this thing. Set it to... Oh, it needs to be... It needs to have a condition, though. I can't have it detecting the uh, cosmic water. So we're going to need arbitrary connections on both sides. Uh, unfortunate. I'm tempted to just include a lighted substation here so that we don't get it on its own little power network. Because apparently those add up. Let's get some scaffolding. And we do already have them handy. And that actually reaches. It's so close. Alright, I guess we'll do the same thing on the other end. Like this. I think I stopped the construction train from carrying these things, though. That doesn't reach? Because it's on the opposite side. Uh, wait, I think we have a, a tiebreaker here. Do add-on power poles float in space? They do. Alright, we're just going to use add-on power poles when we have this mess to deal with. Unfortunately, I can't snap them, uh, snap them in place. So, unless I copy-paste them, they're all going to be slightly different. I could actually put it on the rail. Let's just put it here. And get out of here, you. This is going to go here. And that's it. What the heck? Why am I able to click on... Alright, we're not messing with that. 
I think it's because we're in the editor. Uh, that's looking pretty good. This doesn't need to provide stack threshold. We can have short trains picking up the fluid. I only want long trains dropping it off though, in this case. It's only for little builds um, that I'm going to have a short train bring this stuff. But yeah, I think that is our chemical gel build. Chemical gel. Didn't you choose another type of pole yesterday for station logic wires? Um, I don't think I did. Let me check. Right after I fix this. That's looking pretty good. Perfect snap. Which build would I have done it with? Well, let's look at the ones I've actually physically built. That might be easier. Also, we got a quiet dupa doop. Is there anything else we want to research with our spaghetti? I'm not overly excited about um, follow account, but I don't really have anything else I want to do right now. And the other one needs... Oh wow, that's a lot. I could put portable RTGs in the trains instead of... Instead of having them recharge when they go back to the ball. It does take up more space though. In the grid. I could do compact beacon. I don't really see myself using those. We could knock off... Oh, it's only 50. Let's get space platform plating. Like right now. Just in case we want to make some of our space stuff look not horrible. I don't actually have add-on power poles yet. It's very cheap though. Laser artillery turret. That is pretty attractive. Alright, let's have a look at our existing rail builds over here. I piggybacked across a pump here. Oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. As an excuse to connect it. Except I can't do it at that drop-off build because we need to read from the logistic train stop output. Like I said earlier. So if we're doing one of those little poles, we may as well use more of them. That's a lot of belt, but not quite saturated. We're missing small electric motors. Uh... Oh, here they are. We're a little bit short. Why don't we, why don't we have small electric motors? Where is the build? Oh, here it is. Our train is stuck forever. Not sure how... Not sure how the train limit was greater than zero if... Oh. Because this is imbalanced even though there's a... Oh. Okay. I think this is all in range of... Robots right now, so... We can actually fix that super easily. Or apparently not. Let's get the construction train to come by here for like three seconds. Up you go. And 
there goes our train. But what about the inputs? Oh, well then. Are we short on trains or copper or something? We're short on copper. That's a little bit scary. We've got plenty of good copper mines available to us, though. Just have to go get them. Why is this disconnected? Okay, I think I need to go fix that right away. And I need to put... Chromium cable, aeroframe pole, lab. I think we've already got all of that stuff in the space mall. We can make it anywhere as well. I see that ghost over there. Where's the mine? I went past it. There we go. And we have a couple of trains of copper coming straight away. Alright, cool. What else was I doing? I can actually just add signals here to get the add-on pile... add-on power poles. Uh... I don't think I actually want to bother with the lighted ones for the add-on power poles, now that I think of it. What does the blueprint that I just made have? Regular add-on power poles, okay. So... Add... let's just put it down here. Add-on... Power pole. And we should already have the prereqs in here. We do. Beautiful. So once that research is done. Oh, hey, and we've crafted everything. That's good. Once that research is done, uh, we should have our power poles. And then I'll want to put it into the construction train. Preferably in the same... The same container as these other ones. There it is. What else was I trying to figure out? Let's double check our train isn't stuck. It is not stuck. Fantastic. I feel like I'm blanking on something ever since I came over here. Is this train okay? Yeah, this train's trying to leave. This one is also trying to lay Oh my goodness. Uh, what happened? It's this guy, isn't it? Because this station's a bit old and didn't have this logic that we added. Just to make sure that stuff stays in this container long enough to go into the cargo wagon. That'll do. And don't tell me we've got just barely not enough for the train to leave. There's literally 18 stone left. And apparently this guy's going to take it. Even though you're looking for 752.
doop a doop. That should be our. Uh, it's going to be up to 30 seconds. Nope, here they are. We've already got our add on power poles. Uh, what was I trying to do? Oh, where am I trying to look? Looks like it's sorting itself out now. Is this guy okay? Uh, yep, he's actually just part of the traffic jam. Cool. Any other deadlocks? Doesn't look like it. I really need to make some more copper mines, though. We've got a couple right here. That won't take too much effort. And does that have full coverage? Not quite. some substations. Need another drill over here. And I think that is full cover. Full coverage. Now we just need some rail. Let's start with this one. And over here. And add some signals. This way, this way, this way, this way. This way, this way. Not perfect signaling, but for how rural this area is, that should be fine. And let's park our construction train. Hopefully close enough to build this whole thing in one go. Marsh, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good morning to you. Let's do our lazy mine over here as well, where I think I should probably just take this rail across this way. How did you cycle through the ghost rail solutions there? Uh, okay, so here I press Q just to bring up the rail, click on this, and then... Um, Apparently it's because I'm designing ghosts right now, but if you have, if you physically have rail, I think it will avoid obstacles like trees and rocks if you're not holding down shift or something. But if you hold down shift, it'll go through it. And after that, if you press R or shift R to rotate, um, it'll actually fix it to a specific rotation. So if I want like a, uh, if I want a roundabout, I just face it right and hold shift to make sure it'll skip over things and just move this around until I find the smallest, um, the smallest circle. Apparently it's a little smaller than this, but with this one, we've got paths leaving the roundabout every time. Cool. Never tried that with rails before, thanks, you're welcome. Right, let's grab our lazy mine again. And I think it'll be easiest if we do a couple of these. And then 
like so. Oh, I forgot. Oh, the train left already. Make sure we connect that. Still got plenty of power. Fantastic. Need a little bit more down here. And I guess I'll just wait till the construction train reloads. And then over here as well. Add some more signaling. That's probably enough. Some more drills. I'm copy pasting so that I have the wire connections. And that's our construction train ready to go. Let's bring it over to here and wait indefinitely. And then we need some help down here. And I want a wire connection between these two. But I don't really see a way to do that while they're ghosts right now. Unless we get a bit creative with picker dollies. It's a little tacky, but it works. Uh, and we're going to need some more substations as well. I should update this with the pylons. I should do a lot of things. But I've wanted to get a certain milestone or two sorted out in the space rail blocks upstairs before I take some time out to uh, to do some quality of life stuff. We can do that while the base is building loads and loads of stuff. doop de doo Indeed. Hughes Mike, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright. Uh, we're going to need some power poles, of course. That'll do. And over here. And that should probably be enough. Fantastic. Now I don't want to do anything further. What do you mean? Emo, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, that's 6 million copper. I think we can take a little break. Oh, this is also still 4.5 mil. Uh, we can probably take a little break from sorting that out now. That should be anything 50. And provide stack threshold 1. Fantastic. Should I get some more cryonite coal mining going? It would mean we get a little tiny bit of everything uh, a bit faster. Spent the last 40 minutes cleaning my desk. Holy crap, it was filthy. Oh no. Well, at least now you have that nice, clean feeling. Surprisingly relaxing. Uh, we have stuff coming here. Fantastic. How's our construction train? Fully loaded. Oh, let's go get the rest of this built. Wait for inactivity. Say 30 seconds. I think, uh, 
I'm actually curious to see how this works, because I tried setting enable logistics while moving, since the vehicle roboports aren't working un unless we put it on manual, ever since I... Well, the only change I can think of, I'm not saying this is the reason, but ever since I gave it the space uh, cargo wagons, it's been acting a bit weird. I'm not seeing the bots jump out. The downside would have been as well, they would have jumped out to fix these solar panels, which is kind of good, except for the whole... Um, except for the whole bots jumping out and then taking ages to come back thing. Did we not bring... Oh, this is 60, isn't it? Yeah, we're actually just a couple short. Also, we do have that coolant recipe now. Efficient cooling. Very slow, and we only lose a fifth of a percent of the thermofluid, as opposed to two percent. Fantastic. Alright, let's send you back. I wonder if it's worth the hassle of having to... I don't think it is, to be honest. If we don't find a way to fix it, um, I don't think the 20% extra storage space in the construction train is going to be worth having to set it to manual in order to get the construction bots to do anything. Repaste thermo fluid blueprint for the recipe? Well, it's done now. Only took a second. That is a lot of polished data. I probably should have considered we don't strictly need um, 25,000 polished stored here. But considering how many blank data cards we go through, I don't think I particularly mind all that much. We've hardly made any scrap here yet either. So what are we missing? Copper, which we fixed just recently. We might not have the throughput for copper yet though. Especially since I haven't put the beacons near the new mines. But I kind of just... I, I kind of like just putting plenty of mines. That way we've got a much higher amount before we have to do anything new. Can you make it a four wagon then if you need space? I can't really fit the four wagons um, in these blocks the way that I was doing it because um, I want the the unloader right before the loader I tr I actually started with four wagons with the construction train down here but I ended up cutting it down you can see that storage chest is exactly where this would have been okay um, someone suggested let me just go grab some metals and components. Someone suggested the space locomotive connected to the space cargo wagons might, for some weird reason, make the bots work. I don't think it will, but it's certainly worth trying. It would only be as weird as the problem existing in the first place. Or maybe it would be like one degree more weird. All right, electronic components, rare, rare metals. Have I never requested rare metals over here? Yeah, I have. I just didn't do a dedicated storage for them. Um, I, 
guess I need to admit it's time to do factory search. Could have found it by now. Rare metals. Over here. And we're trying to make space locomotives. Except I have to do the whole thing with the uh, batteries first. Well, it's only the destroyed ones that we have to recycle. Combine the unloader and loader with with some man circuit magic. Uh, I already do have that circuit magic, but it's a bit slow. Because we're able to remove... Well, okay, there's another problem in that because we've got bots in all three cargo wagons, we can read the contents of the train, but we can't read um, specific cargo wagons, which is the reason why I've got a stack size of one to remove stuff that isn't supposed to be in the train or is excess. Uh, but unloading everything means we reset the bots as well. So we get everything sorted out nice and clean. Um, but yeah, if I could read the specific cargo wagon in front of me, it would be a whole other story. Um, Alright, we've got our two space locomotives. Can I handcraft the packs? can definitely handcraft the charges. And that's a no. Oh, we can make these on the ground, so can we prod module them? We cannot prod module them. I'm kind of glad because I don't want to have to bring those up through the space elevator. For the sake of, um, whoops. For the sake of saving a few resources. Just get a handful of these working just in case. Hurry up. I have engaged problem that used batteries are taken in for any bulk unloader. So they were in the whole factory. <laughs> oh no. I don't actually have trains parking themselves with the locomotive part in front of bulk rail unloaders, though. So it probably shouldn't be an issue, unless you're saying that it happens even while they're in motion. In which case, we'd better find that out soon. Alright, let's go upstairs. Jacobaz, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Ezriak as well. The problem was they were driving through them. Uh-oh. I really hope that's not the case, because as much as it as much as I've been procrastinating it, I was kind of looking forward to having the space locomotives um, and being rewarded for the the extra logistical steps by having faster trains. We have established, though, that we could just put uh, the space cargo wagon and space fluid wagons connected to regular locomotives. So we can at least get that 20% bonus on capacity. Doesn't let us just upgrade like this. I didn't expect that. My storage is full. There we go. And this way we keep the schedule. 
Uh, solid rocket fuel does not go in here. We need space train battery. Oh, it needs to be charged first. Oh, look at this cute little 2x2 two two thing. It's kind of slow, though. I mean, I would hope the power packs will keep them going for a while, but still. Let's go with chest output in case the stack size is like one. And another one of these over here. That is really, really slow. I want to see if they stack. Surely they stack. Stack size 20 when they're charged. 60 when they're destroyed. And 60 when they're not destroyed. I'm not exactly sure how charging them cuts the stack size in uh, by two thirds. But, okay. At least it looks coherently like a train now. Um, I'm going to take a wild guess and say this isn't going to fix our problem with the bots. Which means we're basically going to be stuck with regular cargo wagons. I do hope that battery pack is enough for one trip at least. I can't see anywhere where we've got enough, like, we've still got some fuel effectively. And yeah, the bots are not... The nanosecond I put it on manual, they build the the solar panels. Very unfortunate. Alright, let's come back to the emptier. And it is indeed not moving. Is it like random when it... No, okay. For how long that took to charge, I'm very disappointed in how much... Uh... How much trip we got out of this. Does it just like... Does it cost one space train power pack to move any arbitrary distance or something? Because I don't see the usual fuel bar doing its job. Power packs are garbage with default settings? Default settings. Do I still have the opportunity to change it? Crestorio 2, science pack, that's all just science packs, space trains, 50 megajoules, does that mean it takes longer to charge them if they're bigger? I should think 50 megajoules would be enough for one trip, one short trip. Power packs never decay if you switch off this setting. Uh, but yeah, it's a startup setting. I can't change it. Okay, um... The train could come back if it just went the other way. But... It's not really possible right now. Up to 100 megajoules? You can change it in main menu? Okay. I think we might do that because this is ridiculous. We literally went from here down to here and it cost us an entire battery. Um, 
That seems really bad. Where are my batteries? Here we go. It does have a fuel thing. It just... Oh my goodness. That is terrible. What the hell? Okay, these things do stack to 20. But I get the feeling that we actually can fit less fuel... Okay, it was while it was accelerating that it cost more fuel, though. It seemed like it slowed down while it was going fast, but even so. Um, that was like 75% of a battery pack just to come back. At least the space trains look cool, lol. <laughs> they do go faster as well, but look at how slow this charges. Like, a single train driving around all the time is going to outpace a space train battery pack charging station. So we're going to have to have rows and rows of these. Total fuel energy is way less than a nuclear loco or advanced fuel loco, or even a regular one, I would imagine. Low on power? Nope, not even close. It's just this slow. It takes 30 seconds to charge one of them, and there's no... there's no room for modules or anything. I'm pretty sure a beacon wouldn't give it an effect source. Let's... let's make sure. Give it some speed. Yeah, that's not making any difference. It's like running out of wood, right? <sighs> okay. Save. Apparently we're able to change this in the main menu. Let's try it. Settings, mod settings. Back. Uh, wasn't it set to... Did I misread it? I thought it was set to 10 megajoules. Maybe an update changed this option or something. Or maybe I just misread it. Okay, well, the only other option is 100 megajoules. I thought maybe Andy picked that arbitrarily, but apparently this is it. Confirm. And we have to restart the entire game for this. I have a 300 of those charges to keep up with my trains, <laughs> indeed. And the recycling of the batteries when they get destroyed is also garbage, I turned that off. I thought... Like, the recycling, I figured it would be a small price to pay for how much better these would be. But I'm I'm so unimpressed with how little energy the batteries have. Maybe nuclear trains would be better overall. Sync mods and load, what? Mod or mod settings have changed. We've got the same mods. So I think it's literally just the settings. The one setting that we just changed. Which should be. Let's load. Maybe they should have made it a research to make it better? Maybe. And we're getting to the point where it takes a while to load this. 
There we go. Uh, what? Translating dictionaries. Okay. Maybe I should have made a backup save. Max consumption, 3.3 .3 megawatts. Minimum is 500 watts. That's relatively high. I mean, in space it's not that big a deal, but we're going to have these on the ground as well later on. Have things like solar panels on the wagons? I mean, I can put solar panels on the wagons in the grid, but that's only to charge grid stuff. Um, but all that said, I think I will change this construction train, uh, the cargo wagons, back. Gonna have to get rid of several stacks of scaffolding. Make it a little bit more even. This one's fine. This one is fine. I mean, I'll probably eventually give our construction train the space locomotives. But the cargo wagons are going to have to be vanilla. A technology to make them more efficient, yeah, that would be good. So, the nuclear locomotive? Does it take uranium fuel cells, or do we have to make something specific? I think I checked it in the editor before, and it was just uranium fuel cells. Yep, uranium fuel cell. Max speed 250... Next speed 518, wow. That's that's hard to argue with. Acceleration power 4 megawatts, acceleration power 3 megawatts. Uh, weight is 12k regardless. These ones are a bit lighter. The nuclear is only a little bit better. It's like 50% more acceleration actually. Versus double the acceleration of the locomotive. I don't think it's worth the trouble of upgrading to nuclear locomotives, to be honest. That could also add up to a lot of uranium. Eventually. We have 50 fuel stacks at, like, 50 gigajoules. Yeah, you don't have to refuel them very often, that's for sure. Uh, if you want... If you want to maximize how far a train can go... ...in one trip, that's definitely the way to go. Oh, and I want to... I want to copy this schedule, well, this color. It's just 255155. I don't think I can copy paste it across surfaces. There we go. Alright. So, construction train is back to the way it was. And I am a little sad. Alright, what's next? I'm pretty sure I need to add some more storages up here. 
but I think I just want to keep moving towards some goal and just keep adding whatever prerequisites that I notice we need. Uh, we've got everything here except the copper still. I guess I shouldn't be that shocked that it's taking a while to catch up on it. Actually, no, we've got all of the copper here. Did I not request copper in this block? I missed a decimal. Well, there's your problem. There is your problem. Uh, but we also need chemical gel, which I haven't built yet. I did make the blueprint. Now, I probably... Probably want to put the chemical gel build right next to... Cosmic water, actually, which is over here. That seems fine. And let's take our construction train over. I'll grab some extra scaffolding myself. And we'll park somewhere where we can reach all of it. Wait for... Wait indefinitely, actually. Don't forget the train grid equipment. Oh, bollocks. Uh, I guess on this trip I'll just... Uh... I'll just place the things myself. And I need to actually... Oh, I can, I can at least fix it while I'm out here. Bonk indeed. Armadil um, don't. Good to see you again. You're welcome, you're welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, give me that grid stuff back. And give me that grid stuff back. Maybe I should swap out, like, well, it depends on the reach. I really want it to be able to reach across uh, to build the entire block. But if we remove one of these roboports, I've only done the middle one, right? If I remove one roboport, it does still reach that far. I think I would like to give it at least one solar panel, um, just so that it's always charging at least a little bit. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Do I happen to have them lying around? Not over here. I think they're in the mall downstairs. Big portable solar panel. We've got 71. I think I automated those. Can I like shift right click, shift left click to get the grid stuff? I cannot. Actually, maybe I could remove a couple of the roboports so we have more solar. That just barely doesn't reach these two if we park here. So, just one solar panel will have to do. And I need some more... Oh, here we go. I think I'll go get them right now, actually. It won't be much, but I want to get a little bit of a feel for how fast that solar panel charges it. Also, I don't suppose we already have a higher tier that I haven't built? Big portable imasite solar panel. I definitely haven't built those. So that is 192 versus 
384. It's twice as powerful. Um, maybe I should go to the trouble of building those? What do we need? Hemocyte crystal nitric acid. Um, I don't really have those two things in the same spot to smash together clumsily. Actually, yes, I do. It's so rare that I'm going to build these things. I don't have to, like, do a really super specific build for them. Um, I'm just going to squeeze in something over here. Will you update Blueprint on Discord? Uh, yes, I will. Zaxxon? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'll do it right after I get these solar panels charging. Okay. Uh, we need a space assembly machine. I think they're down here. Everything is white. Everything is white. There it is. In here lurking. You're all welcome regardless. I need scaffolding. God damn it. Okay. This will be our little dodgy build. For something that we would otherwise have to go too far out of our way to make, considering we're not going to mass produce it. Uh, where is it? Control click. We also need portable solar panels. Uh, solar panel, glass, steel. I can probably grab all of those right here. In fact, I can grab them right out of this machine. And I need, I think, four times three of these? Yeah. So 12 portable solar panels. Perfect. We also need Immersite Crystal. How many? 5 times 12 is not 50, it is 60. Close enough. Alright, in you go. Faster, please. Although my handcrafting probably won't keep up. And then we need just electronic components, which we have, but not enough to make four of these. Let's go get some. Electronic components. Found them. Now my inventory is too full. Alright, while that's cooking, or well, I guess it, it it's going to pause the game when I do this. Uh, K2 plus SE, export to string, everything is frozen. I saved the game just in case it's actually going to crash it. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Uh, I think it does literally take like five minutes to post it into Discord, though. Um... No? Wait, what? Blueprint book string. What? 
Maybe they improved Discord? Let me see how big it was last time I pasted it. Uh, 3 meg, okay. A2 plus SE so far, question mark? meg. That was uh, literally like 50 times faster than it was last time. I wonder what they optimized. And once again I'm short on inventory space. There we go, that should be all of them. So now we can make three big portable Immersite solar panels. Um, but two by th two, 384 kilowatts just all the time is actually kind of good. Four by four, 800 kilowatts for portable RTG. That's worse. This is like 1500 for the same space and it comes in smaller pieces. I guess we could have made the portable RTG much sooner, but I compared it to the portable nuclear reactor, which gives way, 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 way more power for the same space. And even by my standards, a ridiculously slow consumption of uranium fuel cells. Where are we going? Where's our train? Oh, I sent it back. Did I? No, here it is. It's the big green blob. With the roboports. Let me in. Okay. I don't expect it to be fast exactly. How fast can this charge? With the energy absorber. Max input 12 megawatt. So we are approximately... Um... 31.25 times slower to charge, but it's just doing that all the time. Also, there's a bit less to charge overall. Yep, there we go. We can see a little bit of charge in the big river ports. But I'll keep the, uh, I'll keep the energy absorbers as well. Okay. Let's grab some scaffolding, and I'll place it myself, or my bots will, and I'll take all the credit. Awesome cat, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Is that really all the scaffolding I picked up? I guess so. Now, which build was this? Chemical gel. Chemical, damn it. I wish you could move these things. Chemical gel. Grab some space rail. Grab some more space rail. I guess there's no reason to wait until all of that is placed. Alright, let's grab our blueprint again. And build. T 
didn't even realize I was carrying biochemical facilities as I struggle with my overly full inventory. Grab the space pipes. Why do I have regular rail at this point? Need some sevens. Need some biochemical facilities. And I believe that's it. Oh, how about the solar panels? How about some solar panels? Here comes the cosmic water. And I may as well place some scaffolding for where we want the beacon. Later on. Should be petroleum on the way as soon as this train gets back. Oh, and we need these little things. My inventory is too full, that's why the bots are being confused. I think. There we go. Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. No, stop. Please. Uh, minor detail, I forgot to control which fluids go where. This is supposed to be petroleum. The train's coming, so let's not pick that up just yet. Um, I need to pump that cosmic water back where it belongs. Let's add a little scaffolding down here. Turn these pumps around. And that should manage to get drained. There's nothing in these pumps, right? Yeah, no. Alright, how much are we looking at? It's kind of hard to say. About 6.2k we need to pump. Why is it looking so slow? Oh, wait. Oh, I see. This goes over here. And this goes over here. Alright, it looks like that is actually empty. This one is almost empty. There's like 18 cosmic water in it. Apparently there's still 1k in here. I don't know where it would be. There's 1k in this container. No, it's not in this container. That's weird. Well, regardless, I'm going to delete those. Cosmic water is kind of cheap. I'm not going to lose too much sleep over 1k. And then get rid of this. Make sure we turn that around. And there's our petroleum. And don't forget to turn this one around. Notice while watching the VODs that you sometimes design your block without sufficient power throwing your rate calculations off. Um, the rate calculator doesn't care if you've got power or not. Um, it does care if there's no power and you're trying to calculate with a beacon. It'll tell you, it'll make a sound uh, that 
it can't calculate with the beacon if the beacon's unpowered. But if I if I have like one watt of power and run rate calculator over this, um, it'll give me the exact same stats. Sander, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. This looks kind of tacky, so I'm going to put some more scaffolding in there. And with how little scaffolding I'm using, right, relatively, maybe I should... Maybe I should make the nice scaffolding. Uh, a heavy girder per tile, though? And four steel? Yeah, no. Let's just save that for the mall and stuff like that. Alright, so that's our chemical gel. We've got 4.5k. I wonder how much the bots have charged over here. Or the roboports. More than I would have thought. That's that's not bad, actually. It'll take the edge off a little bit. Um, but also, if I, if I just leave the train somewhere, it'll eventually recharge. Alright, did we miss anything? Doesn't look like it. No ghosts anyway. So now we have chemical gel. We've also got 104. Oh wait, make that 1.1k contaminated bio sludge. Exciting. Uh, apparently we're saturated on blank data cards. That's cool. That's very cool, actually. And I need a couple of thermal radiators marked over here. Should probably make a connection here to shorten the trip. Did I make a space equivalent of that highway blueprint? I did not. Uh, but actually, all I need to do... ...is run the pylon substations up here. Uh, I guess we don't even need the pylon substations. They're not connecting anywhere yet. Anyway. Let's make the chain signals. Not that one, actually. I'll just leave it like that for now. That's our little shortcut. Right turn. Looks like our bot's got enough charge to do some stuff. Already. Maybe... Hmm. Maybe it'll be fine if I just have a couple of big portables instead of the energy absorbers. Well, we're getting all of our power up here from solar anyway. That's going to cut down on the train uh, travel time more than a bit.
Did I forget to prod module these? No, I can't prod module them. I'm pretty sure I can't prod module them. Yeah, no, I remember talking about this. I was kind of glad that I didn't have to not do them in space. Alright. What's next? We should have our chemical gel shortly. We've only got 18k. I'm going to drop the provide threshold for a sec. And then as soon as a, deliver a delivery is scheduled, I, I want to bump that up to 60k for when we have the bigger wagons. Is our fluid wagon busy? It actually is. Let me make it a super high priority. I want to see thermo fluid is working. There we go. That'll do. And once we have thermo fluid, we should have machine learning data, and that is probably going to produce enough scrap that it's about time we dealt with it. I'll just double check, but I don't think scrap can benefit from prod bonuses. Um, where is it? Scrap? Yeah, it can't. That said, though, do I want to send the scrap down to the surface where we do things with iron and copper? Stone will come back to space. Raw, rare metals will not. Um, heavy oil, obviously, will find its way somewhere. Or do I want to process this in space and then send these two downstairs, or these three downstairs? Yes. One scrap equals 30... Th it is my math wrong, or is it like aggregate 35% chance, like 0.35 of one of something. The, s the stack sizes are going to be different as well. No, they're not. They're actually the same. Okay, so stack sizes are equal. Does one scrap turn into 0.35% uh, 0.35 of a, a some solid on average? Yes, no, maybe. I'd say send scrap down, less logistics between planets. Yeah, that's what I was considering. Um, and it's only the stone and heavy oil is, like, practically negligible. Um, it's only the stone that goes back into space sometimes. Oh, I guess we can say one scrap equals... One stone. And it costs how many more times to send something up the elevator than down it? It's like a bit more than five times. Isn't scrap less dense than the ore? No, it's all the same stack size. Um, it also costs way less to send something down the elevator then to come back up. So it's going to cost like five cables when an empty vanilla train goes back up the elevator to bring scrap back down. Um... But you only get 35% of material. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm looking at. So, one goes down, point one comes up, because stone is the only solid that we 
send back up the space elevator. And heavy oil is really, a really, really small amount. It doesn't use that much power that I'd want to do it in space or something. Not really. Besides, power isn't going to be that big of an issue, especially eventually. So I think I want to send it down, yeah. Can't you just do the vanilla core processing block and replace the machines with scrap processing? Since it's exactly the same? Uh, it's not exactly the same. We get iron, copper, stone, rare, and heavy, as opposed to... Iron, copper, coal, stone, rare, heavy. We don't get heavy, actually. Uh, crude oil, mineral water, water, and pyroflux. And also uranium. But I could do the same block and basically just subtract from it. Then again, there's no fluid... Oh, wait. No, there's no fluid inputs either way. We only have to deal with the one fluid output, so we're not going to need all of this extra space. Um, besides, it should be a very easy build. I can just... Oh, wow. Wait. Oh, I've got 50 minutes still. Um, should be able to just slap it together real quick. Like, the time that it might take me to find a build that's the same shape... I could probably get this done. Okay. Uh, recycling. Facilities. Wide area bacon. Um, I kind of want to do this with... The pylon substations as well. And this goes about here. This is going to be scrap. Um, how many can we fit? Not that many. But we probably don't need to. We could probably do... We could... Yeah, we, if we can fit this. It's a bit cozy, but we could definitely... We could definitely fit 24 of these in a half block. Um, actually, that's if it only had output for physical. I think. Can we squeeze this up a couple of tiles? And keep the pylon substation in the same place? And then we have a tiny bit more horizontal space, maybe? How much scrap are you anticipating? All of it. We've actually got an insane amount of scrap that I haven't been processing. Uh, 106,000 contaminated scrap over here. 45k contaminated scrap over here. I thought I had some regular scrap as well. Oh, I think I processed... I did process it here. There we go. And I just smelted it on the spot. Um, contaminated scrap I don't think we can do on the ground. So that decision is going to be an easy one. We get uranium, contaminated bio, and contaminated cosmic out of it in tiny amounts. One cosmic water becomes one of each of these. One scrap becomes one scrap, and occasionally we get uranium. And that just has to be in a decontamination facility. 
Oh, I'll do that build next, perhaps. Um, but we already have... We've already got, like, half a cargo wagon of scrap here. And this build is going to produce a lot more of it, I think. I don't want it to stall too quickly. Alright, so... How fast would this be? Let's say we go super fast. Wide area beacon 2. Speed modules. The usual number of efficiencies. Need some power. Oh, I'll demonstrate. Uh, we've got just a tiny amount of power in this block. We can see it's it's really not happy. We'll rate calc. Well, I'll rate calc this as it is. Yeah, it even doesn't care if the beacon barely has any power. Or does it? 6 per second? 30 per second? That doesn't sound right. Oh, because this one's benefiting from that beacon as well. Uh, let me just empty this. So all of these are set to scrap. Rate calc, 144 in. 1.44k uh, scrap per second. And we're going to give it a proper amount of electricity. And there's no change. If we give all of these speed modules, we're looking at 7.2k scrap per second. Um, let's say we make it even faster, but with efficiency. Fifteen point one two k scrap per second, uh, per minute rather. Two hundred and fifty two per second. That's a bit more sane. Uh, but let's say we remove the supply of electricity. It's still gonna say, wait, one twenty. Two fifty two. Huh. I don't think we would actually get 120 if that's all of the electricity we had. Is it telling us without the beacon? It is. It's telling us without the beacon what we have. So I guess... Even though it didn't do the bump, 126, 252, that's weird. Well, it's definitely not estimating accurately how much we would actually get with the lack of power. If we remove the beacon, 60 per second, 120 per second, 60, 120. Yeah, without a beacon, it doesn't care if you've got electricity or not with rate calculator. Interesting. Okay, wide area bacon 2. That's not how I imagined it. Minimum power consumption just barely. Means 9 efficiency 9s. And this would be... 252 scrap per second. Uh, which is how many of the fastest belt? It's three. Three purple belts. We get significantly less output, so that shouldn't be a problem. But I don't think I can actually fit the, uh, the input-output together with this. Alright, let's not worry about the 
modules and stuff for now. Uh, that should be fine. Be gone. Just do a prod and utility science build first. No, I'm good. Okay, um... I was considering if we're trying to fit this many together in half a block. Um, using a half belt on the outside, but I think that's too slow. Actually, it's not. It's not if we don't speed it up. 6 per second in, less than that out. Let me just compare this again real quick. Uh, so six of these is 63 scrap per second, which is more than more than half of 90. So that's not going to work. I think I'll just stop trying so hard to squeeze so much in here. Unless... Nope, I can't go any further vertically. I think we'll just make it easy on ourselves. Just a nice, neat, basic build. And... Uh, I'm gonna need one, two, three, four output stations. Didn't think of that. So I think we'll do it like this. And I don't think I'll use... well, no, we need one, two, three, four stations. Yeah, I won't be using this block for anything else. We'll potentially double our scrap production. Oh, it's scrap processing in the one block later on. Okay. Whoops. Another one of these. And wire goes here. I'll make this as upgradable as possible. Need some splitters. Need to merge each belt in properly. Just enough room on this side. I guess this is fine. No, I don't like the look of that. And then... It doesn't look right. Yes, it does. Output of heavy oil can go over here. Wait, how many tiles do I have if I split these up a bit? I could definitely move these up a tile so we could have oil output here and here. If I want to do that. But I don't think it's really going to be necessary... How fast is it 
when we go really fast for one individual machine. 10.5 scrap per second. We can definitely do the input with inserters. If this isn't going to cooperate. If we don't have that much room. But I think I'd rather do loaders. If we can... So, and then, how far out does this go? Uh, it doesn't actually encroach on the other side of the build. Also, I probably have some tiles over to the left now that I think about it. Seems good. Okay, I don't have as many tiles to the left as I thought. So we want... This is backward. How about a big ol' storage right here? And then we'll just do the usual filtered outputs. Last ladder is wrong way around. Lead loader. Never mind. Okay. No name. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's do iron. Copper. Oh, wait. Do it this way. Just going to limit these to... 40 stacks, or I could make it 50. And not until we have 100 stacks detected in these two will we summon the train. We also need to do heavy oil at one of these stations, but it's going to be pretty slow going to be much of a problem. That's a pretty good fit. So actually I should have had the provide threshold. 60k. And I think, well it's probably fine if we do allow short trains here, I suppose. But I don't know when that would actually be relevant. And tell LTN that we've got the heavy oil as well. Oh, I need this to be a high priority pickup. Uh, in which case I want the purple. Because we really do not want scrap or scrap related things to back up. This is going to be iron. Iron ore and heavy oil. Uh, and come to think of it, all of them are going to be active pickup. But we don't need the provide threshold for most of these.
don't really care if it's a short train or a long train that picks up. As long as we get rid of it. And... We can do our... It's actually too short for an underground and too long for a regular belt. Let's do it like this. And this one's going to be one tile more, isn't it? Yep. Oh well. Alright, so scrap. Requester. Maybe make this a high priority. I mean, it's kind of implicit. All of the uh, all of the stations that output scrap are going to be high priority, unless I somehow forget. We can fit how much scrap in these two? Six hundred and forty times fifty is thirty-two k. I'm not gonna trust LTN though. It's it will over deliver sometimes. So let's say like twenty-four k. About two thirds full should be fine. And do I want to How do I want to do this? Probably the same way over here. Oops. make that look a little bit cleaner. Oh, I can almost fit a loader here. What if I move the pipe? No, then this one has a problem. Also, I forgot to actually fit a loader here last time. I know that's a really short underground, but well, on second thought, I think that looks better. I'm gonna have to move this over, though. In which case, that probably looks more reasonable. I'm gonna have to do a little zigzag here. Either that, or move this over to the side. I think that maybe looks more reasonable. Seems okay to me. Alright, let's check if it works. Assuming we've actually built the whole thing. So this one's gonna be copper. Uh, I didn't put a filter on these two yet. Whoops. Which one's slower, stone or rare metals? Rare metals is. Let's put rare metals up here. Rare metals and stone. And then delete all of this. Uh, 
That looks pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty tidy, actually. Wait, was that... Yeah, it does cover them all. Okay, cool. So what's our rate without a beacon? Only 12 scrap per second, which is probably relatively high. We can improve it anytime we want. Vanilla pickup for stone? Uh, no, that's fine. We've already got... Let me check. I think for stone, like we did with, uh... Like we did with the... Certain fluids, because we had dual pickups for them that Vanilla can't handle. Uh, I just made stations that basically drop LTN stuff into the vanilla system. And the thing is, I'm not going to rely on just scrap recycling and or core fragment processing or something to provide enough stone for space. So I'm going to have this somewhere regardless. Isn't stone a bit lacking on Hagen? It is. In fact, I think we're a bit short on it at the moment still. Yep. I mean, there's a bunch of stone I can go and get, but it will... I mean, it is a problem and it'll be worse sooner or later. But we do get more stone the more core fragments we process. So just by going to other outposts, um, we've been reducing the problem somewhat. Um, but I haven't actually been setting it up so that we never stop processing Holmanite, for example. Holmanite... Wait, what? Did I just catch it at the moment that it's about to launch? There's not enough rocket fuel. Ruh row. 46k, 39k. Well, I guess that's our bottleneck for Holmanite at the moment. We've got water and oil on this planet. But I still went and built the infinite, except for iron plate, uh, rocket fuel machine. Interesting choice. Alright. You know what? I'm not going to use this block for anything else. I think I would like to... Build the double block from the start. So let's copy paste this, remove some of the stuff. This over here. I could put it right there. I think I'd rather make it line up the same way as we did on this side. Perfect. And as expected, I need to move these over a tile. And that's not going to pose any problems for heavy oil throughput, because it is very, very slow.
easiest doubling of my life. Oh wait, we need to bring this scrap in over here. Let me move this down a tile in case we ever actually want two hold belts here. pretty good to me. Oh. Let's blueprint. Uh, scrap. This is actually the first uh, resource that we're going to be doing a train to go from space down to the ground, I believe, with the rail system. Did I... I did copy this train stop, so I have the name, right? Yes. Alright. Scrap. Recycling. And snap to grid. Train stop names, yes. I think we got rid of the cheat items. Have you named the left station? Yes, I have. I copy-pasted from this one to this one. From the left to the right. Cool. That should be it. And let's figure out where to build it. Probably close to the space elevator, right? We do generate some scrap on the ground, I think. Um, that's Nalvis. I, I don't want all surfaces. Ah, uh, goddammit. Hagen. There we go. Uh, oh hey, I've actually got another build here. It's very slowly gaining scrap. I thought I did scrap recycling. I did. I completely forgot about this. Whoops. I don't really like this layout as much, though. Bonk, indeed. Uh, it, it's fine. I... Oh, I actually did a smart loader system for this. So that we didn't have to have the multiple train stops. I think I like the, the version I just did better, though. It's much cleaner. We don't have any inserters. It'll upgrade better for high throughput. We don't have this mess, whatever this is. We're, we're like cycling the scrap round in circles. That was, yeah, that was an interesting choice. Okay, so I want it close to the space elevator, but how close is a question. I mean, I could always move it technically. Right here will be a nice short trip for our train. And need to remove the old power poles. Of course, I forgot that I have a blue, not blueprint, a decon planner for that. Alright, that should do it. 
Um, I'm going to have to go there myself since I don't have the Melon substations on the construction train just yet. Also... I don't... Do I have recycling facilities in this thing? I don't. I think it would be easier if I just grab them. Because their stack size is so small. And we don't build them often. More well, machines and inserters equals lower UPS, pretty much. That's one of the reasons I want to be able to upgrade these things, like have an upgrade path where we can go ham on modules and not have as many machines. I'm surprised how much of this I could build in one go without even trying to make sure that I brought the stuff. Alright, let's go back to the mall. Is this train okay? Apparently not. Provide threshold 50k. It's not like we have that much coal. Is it the vanilla train? No. How did this happen? What? How did this happen? I really don't know. The train shouldn't have been scheduled here unless there was 50k petroleum. Also, well not also, this thing pr primarily produces coal. If we're saturated on coal it won't produce petroleum. Module production is an exercise in itself. Am I just getting, I'm just getting for tier 4 started? Yeah, it is quite a thing. Last playthrough, I did a big auto-crafter machine that would just swap the recipes on uh, space manufactories to get the uh, to get the modules built. Yeah, I really don't understand why that train was scheduled there if there wasn't enough petroleum for pickup. And it was actually stuck there indefinitely too because we can't produce more petroleum here until the coal is gone out of the way. Very weird. Okay, back to the malt. Give me some recycling facilities. And probably some extra blue belt. I've probably already got enough, actually. Laser artillery turret is at 61%. Fantastic. I need to put an icon here before I forget. Scrap. And are we done already? We're missing 14 blue undergrounds. God damn it. Other than that, it looks like it's done. Um, I'm going to want vanilla trains to deliver to here as well. 
That's something that I hadn't considered yet. Pickups are easy enough to be both vanilla and LTN, as long as it's only one resource. But... I guess I just have to set the train limit to zero if... If scrap is above X, that's it. It's actually pretty simple. Alright. Scrap. If scrap is greater than... The red wire is... The, the negative signal is separate here because of the red wire. If scrap is greater than 24k... Sorry, if it's less than 24k, or maybe a bit lower even. Actually, if there's only going to be one vanilla scrap train, we can probably count on this being precise. 640 stacks is 32k. Um, so 8,000. 100 stacks times 50 is 5,000. So that still leaves 3,000 as a gap, just to be just to be safe. Yeah, we can allow one train to come here if there's 24,000 scrap. That should be fine. Alright, so if scrap is less than 24... K output 1L set train limit. Fantastic. Same thing on this side. And it's as easy as that. Set train limit L. Uh, and I might want to get rid of that other one, otherwise the vanilla trains will take it here. Not that it's probably a problem, since we aren't going to run out of... We're not going to have trouble processing that much with way more recyclers than we need. Let's go back to the mall. Get those undergrounds. And I need to think about how to do the reverse. I'm going to need... Um, no, I already have vanilla depots up here. It doesn't matter that the train will be going in the opposite direction. Um, although, one thing this will change is I can no longer say every train here is telling me that we are short of some resource. Um, there's not enough rough data storage substrates to pick up at the moment, for example. Unless I have a specific, uh, different depot name for the trains, which are going to be upbound or downbound, which I'm not going to do. Alright, so our vanilla train to bring stuff down from the space elevator is going to be much the same, except instead of going to a provider and then going Hagen up, it's going to go to a provider and then go Hagen down. Uh, and it's going to go depot, provider, Hagen down, depot, requester, Hagen up. Not too complicated. Oh, um, do we also need to... I guess we're never going to have LTN pick up scrap. Up in space. I mean, I could leave it as a possibility. Mm -hmm. 
I could leave it as a possibility for LTN to pick up the scrap. But... That means whenever I do scrap output, I'm not going to be able to do, like, a mixed pickup for scrap and contaminated scrap, for example. Unless I have a... just like I did on the ground. A station here where we drop off stone from LTN and pick up stone with vanilla. And I don't want to make any more of those stations than I absolutely have to. We've already got enough stuff like that over here. One chest was missing? Uh, where was that? Let's go get these solar panels built while I'm thinking about this. And over here as well. Okay. So... I'm going to want to go up the space elevator. Scrap Active Provider. Oh, but we've got a whole bunch of different station names outputting scrap. I guess I will do a uh, scrap dropped from LTN into vanilla. Maybe I should do a block like this, only backward? Specifically for these things? Seems like a pretty good idea, actually. Let's keep our construction train handy. And... Wait. Wait here indefinitely. Uh, I need to go back to orbit regardless. One, the scrap build underground, and one big chest. Oh, right, the big chest. Because I don't normally carry that. Also, did I actually rotate these? Yeah, good enough. I think I would like it better if they faced away from the middle. Kind of looks slightly less bad. Okay, up through the spell evader. And I think right about here should be... I kind of want to keep this area for fluids, but... Alright, let's do it over here. So I want to grab... Uh, this blueprint, vanilla to LTN, maybe I should do this in the editor first real quick. I want to make a new blueprint out of it regardless. And apparently I missed this spot here for empty space. Not that it matters. Get rid of the scaffolding. I said get rid of the scaffolding. Oh my goodness. There we go. And 
and I guess it leaves those checker bullets behind. It's probably fine either way, but I feel like clearing them out. Okay, grab our blueprint. I think I want to go with the one we've already got and edit it. Vanilla to LTN. And I could just leave it as it is with where the drop-off and pickups are. Except I'll have to change the stations around. Scaffolding is going to go here instead for the combinators. Okay, so here and here. And these need to be... Well, they don't need to be vanilla train stops. But I like to be able to tell what's going on with them a little bit easier. So this is going to be... Provider... With... Train stop. Just show that it's a vanilla. Let's do... The question mark thing. So, trains definitely won't be coming here by accident. Draw a template. And here we're just going to say... If anything greater than... I'll set some arbitrarily high number. What's our smallest... No, what's our largest stack size? 200? So 200... With a, with a 50 slot cargo wagon, 20,000. If anything greater than 20,000, uh, output L1 for train limit. The mixed train tracks look funny. Yeah, I know. Uh, the way that works is basically... Why can't I place that there? Must align with rail grid. Oh, I see. Okay, so if we have... If we have a uh, space rail going through here... If it lines up just right, the space rail sort of is a high priority slash overwrites the... Um, the vanilla rail looking stuff that is hidden behind, well not hidden, uh, behind this uh, bulk rail loader. And the ones that are one tile off, which unfortunately with the way train stops are, unless we want them to... This would actually work, but it would look pretty weird when the train stops in. Um, unless we want it to look like that. It'd be one off where the actual cargo wagons are. Um, unfortunately, one of them has to look strange. Kellogg's, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to do a LTN request us to Quest it. Oh, I see. Right. This goes here, doesn't it? Wait, what? I think I got a little confused.
Let me just remove the extra scaffolding until I figure it out. Uh, LTN train stops go here, 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 and here. And the extra scaffolding, if I want to put these in the usual place, goes in front of that light. And then request a station. Just like this. Weird or funny it is then? Tough decision? Yeah. Alright, cool. So we're gonna do wire connections like so. Request threshold 100k. We don't need fluids here. And then basically the exact same thing on the opposite side. Let's do a little temp blueprint. And that should be it, except there's some wires missing. And for the combinators as well. And I believe we set up this one properly already, so let's just copy paste that. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did you flip the loaders? Indeed. Um, all right, so blueprint. Uh, actually, I want to see the template that I used for naming this thing. Vanilla. LTN, space elevator, storage, all right. Space elevator, storage, LTN to vanilla. And come to think of it, I should probably do this on the ground as well, where I've got a much less space-efficient design, even though we've only done this with a few resources so far. Alright, seems good. 86, 25, 1. That's our snap to. Looks a good... And let's put that one down next to this guy. I think I'll put it on a different level, actually. Okay, so now we need this thing in space, right about here seems good enough, where am I putting it, there we go, let's get our construction train to pay us a visit. Should be fully charged with those solar panels. Once I configure one of these, we'll be able to set up our train. Maybe 
I can give it a hand with the scaffolding. Just about done. Can I not tell if there's any scaffolding missing? It looks like we've done it. Alright. Grab our blueprint again. LTN2 vanilla. And I probably don't have enough bulk loaders to do it in one trip. How many is this? 16 and 16. And we are loading 20. Oh, we should be able to do it in one go. Bots are just getting a bit tired. Just leave some rail to place. Alright, so it was scrap, wasn't it? it? Is the first thing that made us decide to do this. Because uh, we've got almost half a wagon. For the space wagons, that is. Scrap Questa. Request stack threshold 100 seems good. Let's ask for. Uh, well, how much scrap can fit in here? Because we're not going to send it anywhere else. Call it 600 stacks. Three 30,000. I think I'll just request the same amount as I did at the other place 24k. Actually. I think it was 24k. That's 240k. Not that oversupplying the scrap here would be that much of a disaster, because it just has to get... We just have to get rid of it, no matter what. And since our stack size is 50... Um, should just be 5,000, right? If there's more than 5,000... Then, wait, let me check. We're not accidentally getting another signal here. Cool. But I think I will set this to the specific resource. Just makes it clearer that this spot's taken. Alright. And I might want to put an icon here on the map. Hey, perfect! Arrow to land, that shows these things are going downstairs. Although I can't really see them, f see it for the train stop names. Not even the names, just the, the little dots. I guess, I guess I'll put this here. Kind of tacky. Alright, so our vanilla train is going to... I didn't name the station yet, did I? Scrap. Scrap provider to vanilla train stop. That's what we're looking for. Alright, so up, Hagen up, depot... Uh, scrap pickup. 
wait until full cargo. Uh, down to Hagen. Go to depot. Go empty cargo. Seems good. I think. Up you go. Actually, go... Oh, you're already fueled, aren't you? Yeah. Go upstairs. And we'll test this thing, even if we don't have that much scrap just yet. What will give us a lot of scrap is cleaning up that decontaminated... Or decontaminating that scrap that we've already got. I did blueprint this. Yes, I did. Let's remove all of that. finally get started in this build. Um, I think I'll just fill it with scaffolding. That's a little big. I wonder how big this is. 60, 80, about 78. Perfect. Alright, so it's decontamination facility and nothing else, right? Yep, it's got to be decontamination. Um, what's the layout going to look like? Contaminated scrap. One fluid in, two fluids out. Alright, this will be a little bit of a headache. Let's go for bacon over here. Right about there-ish. Uh, hu hu uh, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So I should hopefully be able to fit lots of these. It depends on the pipes, basically. That's way too far. And we're probably going to have to separate these every pair. And... This is probably as good as it might get. How fast are we talking here? At the base speed, the fluid isn't a problem at all, but the scrap itself is actually pretty fast. I doubt we're going to need this many machines, slash, if we beacon it, it's going to be absolute chaos. But the fluid, the fluid is very, 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 very slow. So we can shape our pipes any way we like. Something like this, perhaps. How many tiles is this? Seven? Uh, five, six, actually. Six, twelve, thirteen. Um, if the fluid is super slow, I can probably just do it like this. Oh, right. Does reach at least. 
Okay, how insane would this get if we speed it all the way up? I need more speed lines. And efficiency. Minus 80% power. That's what we're looking for. Okay. 840 scrap in and out per second. I don't think we're going to go that fast. Considering the deep space belts are 90. Well, let's see how how many belts we can shape around it and tune it to that, I think. Okay. So the pipes... How am I going to get the uh, contaminated bio sludge? to meet if we do it this much. If this goes here, we've got like two tiles on this side, one tile on this side. That's not looking that great. It's only now that I'm doing stuff in space with some of these big machines that I'm occasionally finding this half block a little bit cramped. But considering we really don't need this many machines and we're sure of that, we could probably... probably do something like that. So how fast would that be? 1.12k per second. 560 on each side. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have much trouble having enough machines to keep up. Let's just see how much belt we can fit together. If I do do it like this, I'm going to have to have input and output between these two. Which is probably fine. Kind of like this better. Move that down a tile, I guess. Oops. Oh, this is not the same distance. Alright, if that's max distance apart, we just barely have room over here. That looks pretty good to me. It'll probably make it easier to get the contaminated uh, bio sludge where it needs to go as well. So we could have one belt in, one belt out for each of these. Or since it's it's almost identical, the amount of stuff that goes in and out, very, very, very slightly more coming out with the uranium. Um Wait, really? One one machine is 70, 70 scrap per second. How fast is it with no beacon? 6.6666666. That's actually kind of quick. I'd like to do this with loaders if I could. Yeah, I think I'm trying to fit... I think I'm still trying to fit too many machines. Uh, 
Or I could have this go a little further as well. Okay, so what does it look like if we do loader in and loader out? One belt each. And how how can we squeeze that together? Let's pretend this is our plate. I not worry about the size of the machines just yet. I could obviously do a half belt like that. But that won't be good enough. We're going to need the splitters to be in the same place, basically. That goes there. That goes there. And I think I see it. Except it'll be different down here. Because it has to merge in. Splitter. Like this. And this is actually splitting, not merging. Is this it? I think it might not be small enough, and I don't think we can get any smaller. It is just barely too big to do it this way. If we have more space horizontally, we can probably make it happen. Hold up. Can this one go further in, and does that help anything? I don't think it will help. Move the underground down on the right. The underground down on the right. You mean like here? Oh, that's no good. Actually, that is fine. If we block this. So this is the output. And this is the input. Oh wow, that is tidy. Does that actually work? I'm going to be very pleased with myself if that actually works. So, input comes from here. We've got scrap, or contaminated scrap. And we need cosmic water. I think it works. Yeah. Alright, we're blueprinting this. Um, loaders. 
one belt in, belt out. Um, and I guess I'll put this, I haven't actually used this lane and belt balancer book in ages. Not this whole playthrough, really, or barely at all. I'll just put it here for now. Keep it separate. No, I think I will put it in here, down the bottom. Okay. So if we have this layout... Oh. Oh, you're joking. I can't fit the output for the... for the contaminated cosmic water this way. Well, I'm happy I found this layout with belts anyway. That's kind of cool. But, yeah, that is definitely... not looking like it's going to work. I, I'm just going to be disappointed if I have to go, like, only one column of machines on each side of the beacon in each half. Seems like a waste of space, but, like, I get it, these machines are ridiculously quick. We're also obviously not fitting this here. So, I guess... Just say goodbye to those machines. Can you use a chest with some logic? Um, how would that help though? That'll give you an extra tile both ways. You could have the center water input connect on the outside. Do you mean like, uh... Why can't I pick it up? Oh, I see. You mean like connect the water here? I'd still have the problem of the contaminated cosmic water output. Oh, wait, 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 wait a second. No, I think I just realized. We're one tile short of being able to underground through this. You could move an unloader up one, and it will free up a space for the underground pipe. Uh... Oh, you mean like, if I do this... That, that'll work. I can't believe I didn't see that, that's actually pretty straightforward. I think it was slightly different from what you were saying. Move an unloader up one. I can't move this one up one. It's already... Or oh, if by up you meant down this way, then yeah. That's actually it. Although, as I said, there's not enough horizontal space to do this on both sides. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking we just go with, like, eight or 12 machines. Oh, we can't even fit the 12 machines because... Actually, we can if we bring these closer together. Let's keep this in the middle. Yeah, we can just barely Just, just, just barely. Alright, how fast would it be with insane speed modules? Probably too fast. But I'm a little bit pleased that I fit this together regardless. Oh, wait, we don't need this one. Cool. 
And we're obviously going to have plenty of room for pipes out here. Alright, so... That goes there, and there, and there, and there, and there. This one will be a little bit different. Since it doesn't have to keep going. Oh. But this one doesn't... Uh-oh. It's fine. You did it? The two didn't match? Wait, the two didn't match? Won't those machines outstrip belt feeds once moduled? Uh, yeah, I think they will. Even with the deep space belts, but I'm seeing what I can fit and just figuring things out. So that's one whole belt in, one whole belt out. Um, the deep space belts only do 90 per second. That's kind of weird to me, especially considering the ground belts can do that. And we'll have them sooner. So now we just figure out the maximum number of machines that makes any sense. Uh, unless we can do more than one belt in and out, which I, I really doubt that. Per machine, that is. Or well, not per machine. So how fast is one column? 420. Um, that's a lot. 210... 140, that's like two, that's like two, uh, well, it's more than one deep space belt. How many 45s is it? We can kind of think of it as two 45 belts each. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve belts. Yeah, we're not doing that. What about before we beacon it, though, and speed nines? 20 per second? Okay, yeah. I think we'll just go with this layout. And we'll just remove extra machines when we upgrade when we don't need them. And I think rather than trying to squeeze more belt into all this, It'll probably be easier to just do more over here, if we have to. Alright, let's get rid of these extra... ...wastes of inventory space. So, just barely above 40 per second out. Seems good to me. Let's copy-paste this to this side. And then... Uh, we need to do the pipe things. About... Like this. And that just barely reaches. Oh, I could move all of these down one tile to be a bit cozier. But we've got all this extra space, why not just make it a bit more spacious? And then, same thing... Uh, do I need to flip it? No? M confusion. Is that right? No? What have I done? I think I see... what's going on here. Nope. I'm 
I'm still confused. And I don't know how I managed that. Oh, I see. Yeah, it totally has to be flipped. There we go. What's that? Nine, ten tiles? Nope. What? Oh, it's a different... Wait, what? Why don't I just start with this? We don't actually need this bit. That's the wrong... Load type. And this one goes here. Okay, I think we figured it out. Yes. Complicated. So this does go here. And that looks a little bit unfortunate, but it's probably fine. And that's seven. Uh, and this doesn't actually go anywhere? Wait, what? How did I end up... Oh, right, because I was avoiding this thing. That's a bit different. Let's do a... F that doesn't actually go anywhere. But we could do it either way. Kind of want the consistency, though. Okay, just to be sure, let's delete everything on this side. And... Connect that over there. And we need to test it. We also need input from the actual uh, train system as well. But that is not the most difficult part. Bring this over here. And I guess I could put it closer to the middle. Don't think it's going to look any better though. So we're doing contaminated scrap. Looks like it's working. Delete all the output. This doesn't actually go anywhere. Nor does this. Can I put this here? Yeah, that's kind of nicer. I didn't click this yet. Okay. Looks like all of these machines are moving. And it doesn't look like they're about to stop. Actually... 
I see the belt has stopped. Oh, right, because it's 40 per second. Yeah, of course it would saturate. We're not consuming more than 45 on each side. May as well throw in some efficiencies. So it costs almost no power. And it doesn't look like it's having any issues. Alright, so we need two physical outputs and two fluid outputs. Um, but I th think we'll continue that tomorrow. We've gone a bit over time for today. Ooh, and laser artillery turret is finished. Sounds good. Let's knock out this prerequisite. It's actually not a prereq, it's the alternate recipe for processing units. Excellent, actually. Uh, what else have we got? Aeroframe scaffold? I don't have Astro 2 yet. Probably do some more zone discovery. And let's look for a stream to raid. Okay. I've only got half an hour left on my life support. I better hurry. We got JD. It's been a minute since I raided JD, I think. Take care, Marsh. Thanks for hanging out. Awesome cat. Take care as well. And everyone else. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of the Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And uh, till next time, stay safe. Like a boss. How you doing, Hacks? Welcome, mate.